Hey guys! So, the village Huaxi, located in a Chinese province, is famous today because it is home to, get this, only millionaires. People whose net worth is less than $400,000, well, they're considered poor in Huaxi. The village is currently home to 60,000 people. They all live in luxurious homes, drive luxury cars, and keep massive amounts of money in their bank accounts. Decides to move out of the village, they lose a ton. It's true no one's in a rush to leave Huaxi, since every resident has the right to free health care, education, and housing, as well as life insurance and even subsidies for produce. At the end of each year, the administration divides 20% of the village's total income equally among all the residents, including underage children. Now, this is possible because all the villagers are shareholders in the Huaxi Village Corporation. They receive 20% of the income of all the companies in the village. The rest of the profits go towards future social and economic growth. Locals call number one village under the sky. And there's nothing similar elsewhere in the world. So Huaxi Village's cottages one more luxurious than the next. Their own skyscraper, a huge building, 1,076 feet tall. Now, the villagers moved away from farming a long time ago. I mean, why should they be farmers when there's more profitable business at hand? So they mastered other types of production, not in the farming industry. But not everything is as perfect in this village of millionaires as you might guess at first glance. So the history of growth here is worth looking at just like a little bit closer. So fairly recently, around the early 1970s, it was just a normal village here. And of course, there's many villages in China. Now, the local farmers didn't have anything especially boastworthy, nothing unique. They would work from dawn till dusk on their harvests. And they worked and worked some more, ceaselessly gathering whatever would grow. Now, say what you will, but individuals are always important in stories, especially in this one. Now, just one of the typical farmers, Wu Renbao, became the per reformat of the village life. So back in the early 1960s, one was named Secretary of the Village Communist Party Committee. Now, even with today's standards, a person given party power is, well, quite powerful. They're not a normal worker who's making something from morning till evening, but someone who has a wide range of powers, all the more back then. However, 50 years ago, no one in China debated socialist capitalism. All the citizens built their bright future together with the goal of appearing in the faraway future of communist society. So we can confidently say that Wu Renbao actually received real power in an isolated community. But his thoughts, even then, noticeably were ahead of the times and the Chinese party leaders as well. So most importantly, he had an idea that he started gradually realizing. So in late 1969, he made a decision that was very dangerous politically, but very profitable as well. His initiatives caused the construction of a textile plant, Lead Husai. Now, all the documentation, oddly enough, were in accordance with the higher authorities. Business marched on, even badly for Rimbao. He later said it was extremely painful for him to watch how the villagers were overworked and weary. So, he made an appeal for the party's policies to not turn away from the real needs of the citizens. In this case, the villagers of Huasi. He achieved much of what he imagined. It's surprising, but he got away with such a daring approach by a lower-ranked party member, since what he had said and his initiatives could have landed him in prison. But his decisiveness led to the Chinese village flourishing in the end. Moreover, his announcement that a farmer with an excellent harvest would still be poor was met by other Chinese party members listening to him. It turns out that the simple idea that extra money could provide growth was appreciated by many, including the villagers, naturally, who wanted to get rich immediately. However, almost 10 years passed before China started moving away from socialist communes in favor of private farming. That's when Huasi's time came. 
Having been raised with the ideas of their fearless party leader, they decided to keep moving on instead of just stopping with what they had, since the textile industry was bringing in a decent profit during the Chinese rebuilding. So, in 1998, Huasi became the focus of an experiment that would have company share Shanghai Stock Exchange and all the villagers turned into shareholders of the Huasi Corporation. Now, over the next several decades, eight large promising companies appeared around the village. To the envy of their neighboring villages, Huasi grew exponentially faster, so no one was surprised when the corporation bought another 12 neighboring villages. The villagers demolished all their archaic homes and moved into luxurious cottages. Almost no one walks here. Everyone has expensive cars, and the banks are filled with plump accounts. Sometimes the locals joke that they achieved what previous Chinese leaders couldn't, building a developed socialism. And in a way, they're kind of right. Now, with the exception of their hefty free social package, including full medical care, they're also happy owners of large packages of stocks in various companies. Additionally, Every villager here has additional income. Everyone gets a percentage of the corporation's profit. A committee gathers once a year to solve the main problems, like distributing dividends, subsidies for food, and providing additional benefits, as well as 350 pounds of rice per family. As a reminder of their poor past, there are elderly over 100 years old here who are also given additional monetary aid. However, 10,000 won is given to all family members that help old age. Now, those who travel to Huasi see this luxury. But this garish luxury doesn't stop the villagers from honoring their patron father, Wu Renbao, whose portrait is hung everywhere. They depict him as a very modest worker. He's always dressed in humble farm clothes or a well-worn suit. The latter is always shown with the corresponding news like an audience with the PRC's chairman. Rinbao's other family members are always shown in less official dress. Now, at first you might think that they love and respect tourists in Huasi since they have several modern hotels, ceremonial buildings, and restaurants decorated in gold. The villagers drew even more attention when they built the 1,076-foot-tall skyscraper. In 2011, the Longzi International Hotel was built. It was the first skyscraper to be built in a village. The 60th floor proudly displays large sculptures of solid that are have said to have cost $47 million. Nevertheless, many people in Huasi sometimes are filled with doubt. A lot seems strange. For example, the villagers look kind and sometimes vain, but are reluctant to participate in informal communication and you won't be able to get them to talk, not to mention the service staff, of which there's plenty. These people are so kind, several visitors to the village feel like what's happening isn't real. It's possible it's because all the service staff are people who came to Huasi to make money. The staff holds their work in high esteem, which caused this super service in the village. But a careful eye will quickly notice the many guards guarding the villas of the millionaires are absolutely not inclined to show anyone that the world is a friendship of like-minded people. And you'll quickly notice that all the mansions look the same as if they were built by one architect. Even the trees are identical. So many people feel like it's a photo of an expensive demo project by the PRC. So overall, everything's good and clean, except maybe the pipes that pump out as thick smoke everywhere. To a happy but the local government is working on it. Several chemical plants have been closed in recent years, and the recovered expenses are over $50 million. Additionally, there's nothing to spend money on. Education and medicine are free. Food is very cheap, and there's no real entertainment. So the residents decided to build a 74-story futuristic skyscraper. So they've probably already made the joint decision that the time for chemical plants is gone, so it's time to make money on something else, like tourism. They've been whispering about ecological problems for a long time, and the huge skyscraper was probably built to announce their partial redesignation as a tourist destination. 
Now, Huasi has a park of tourist sites from all over the world, with copies of famous buildings and structures like the White House, the Arc de Triomphe, the Sydney Opera House, the Great Wall of China, and more. You can see them from the ground or from the skyscraper, as well as from a helicopter that you can rent. Kwasi is home to well-provided for people who built a unique home for themselves. Well, that's all for today. Let me know, would you visit this city? Do you even think it's real? I'm not sure about this one. And we'll see you again next time.